webinar? I started. Good afternoon. And thank you all for attending the NAMI California Annual Business Meeting. My name is Pat Cornier. I'm honored to serve as the president of the NAMI California Board of Directors, and I am calling our annual business meeting to order officially. I'm excited to share some details with you today about what all of us will acknowledge has been a very difficult year, but one in which NAMI can be very proud about our contributions here in California. First, I'll give you a brief overview of what to expect this meeting. Um, we were gonna go through a COVID-19 update. I'll give a business report for fiscal year 2020, 2021, make some announcements, and we expect to conclude our meeting by 3 p.m. Next slide. First, of course, it's always important to revisit our mission and vision statements. NAMI California is a grassroots organization of families and individuals whose lives have been affected by serious mental illness. We advocate, advocate for lives of quality and respect without discrimination and stigma for all our constituents. We provide leadership in advocacy, legislation, policy development, education, and support throughout the state of California. NAMI California is the leading organization of individuals working with mutual respect to provide help, hope, and health for those affected by serious mental illness. The organization that we know today as NAMI California is the result of the efforts of a few courageous parent leaders, many families and thousands of individuals, friends and professionals that worked hard in the 1970s and 1980s to give birth to an organization that would completely change the way we view mental illness. During that time, family dream, families dreamed of the day when a child with schizophrenia would be treated no differently than a child with another chronic illness. They hoped for a time when mental illness could be discussed openly and their ill children and family members could be properly cared for in their own communities. As you know, accomplishing these simple goals, however, has not been easy going along the way. Next slide. Let me talk about COVID and its impact over the last 12 months. Actually, 12 months ago for last year's annual business meeting, we were only three months into the pandemic shutdown and a lot has happened since then. Now we hope we see the end at the, of the light at the end of the tunnel. One of the most critical insights we've had is that there's been a remarkable upswing in mental health needs that have been present throughout the pandemic with increased isolation and anxiety really acting as a catalyst in those who may be vulnerable to mental illness. Further, we know that as the pandemic begins to subside, we are seeing and will continue to see a large amount of untreated mental illness and that NAMIs across our nation will be called upon to assist with every, everyone uh, in this coming year. We at NAMI California stand ready to continue to do our part to make sure that we continue uh, to meet these challenges head on and make sure that no one is left behind in getting the help that they or their loved ones need. I'd like to share a few reasons to feel hopeful. First is that as of the second week of June, the California Department of Public Health said that nearly half of the state of California was fully vaccinated and that about 46% of California's overall population are fully protected via vaccine and about 56% are at least partially vaccinated. Throughout the remainder of today's presentation, you will hear some of the ways NAMI California worked to adapt and rise to the many challenges brought on by COVID-19. But most importantly, how NAMI California continues to find new ways to be there for those who need us now more than ever. Next slide. First, a little bit about programs. Um, this year, NAMI California has continued to push the envelope of providing training and resources to the communities of our state. In this last year, we met 100% of all requested training needs from affiliates providing training to over 307 trainers and facilitators through NAMI California signature programs. Over these past 12 months, NAMI California's team 
continue to be in close contact with our affiliates statewide through Zoom meetings to provide technical assistance and to learn even more from one another as we move through these continually changing and unprecedented times. Next slide. Our programs in California exist as a partnership and for us at NAMI California, that means getting resources out to the communities that need them. This year alone, more than $900,000 in direct support has gone to our local, local affiliates to promote programs and to provide employment to NAMI members and their families. With the passage of the peer support specialist legislation, NAMI California wasted no time in making sure that the communities we serve were leading the way in being employed in these critical roles across the state. Today, I'm delighted and proud to share that this year NAMI in California has employed more than 100 peers in full-time work. It's a milestone achievement and one we hope to build on over time. Next slide, yes. Um, in addition to employing so many folks, we also have our eyes set clearly on the future and the pipeline to both creating and training leaders across the state. Throughout California this year, we've launched recruitment programs spanning across social media and in partnership with our affiliates. We've recruited hundreds of qualified candidates who want to become peer support specialists and help change the mental health care system. We didn't stop there. This year alone, we have trained more than 200 new leaders throughout our state training uh, programs who are now ready uh, to be employed in paid or volunteer positions across California. Next slide. Our NAMI on campus program has continued to grow as well. Throughout the pandemic, we continued to reach out to schools and get them involved in getting support out to students in need across California. For example, this year we held trainings virtually for students and faculty to effectively meet them where they are. We also updated NAMI on campus uh, in the campus high school program as a way to be more accessible to students uh, who are distance learning through the COVID-19 pandemic. This includes updates to the startup process as well as hosting trainings and updated NCHS trainings to a virtual format for schools across California to interact and learn about mental health and creating a sustainable NCHS club. This year, we train schools from across the state who are providing support and education to their schools virtually, ensuring NAMI's influence and resources are reaching those who are the most in need. Despite these challenges that came with the pandemic, NAMI California has continued to receive interest from schools across the state, and we have continued to do everything in our power to keep NAMI's programs at the forefront of youth services and available to those who need them. Next slide. If there's one thing we are not known for at NAMI California, it's sitting on our laurels. Although we've had an incredibly successful year, we are working with partners on new and innovative ways to reach and help those in need. In fact, in the context of all the change and creativity that we've seen in this last year, we're energized for that work. In the coming months and years, we'll have more to share about these impactful partnerships and the ways in which we hope to continue to improve the care delivery system in California that NAMI is such an integral part of. Next slide. Shifting to community engagement now, let's talk about how NAMI California has worked this year to engage communities across our great diverse state. Next slide. This year, we were honored to host our annual multicultural symposium to much success. In fact, this event represented more than a 50% increase in attendance from any previous symposium, marking a very clear signal that we have increased the availability and reduced barriers to participation. Although we were physically separated this year, we were happy to be together virtually to learn from each other and find new ways to connect to the communities of California. We were joined by an incredible lineup of speakers, including board member Jay Africa, who gave an important talk about why we should bring conversations about race and racism to the table. We were also joined 
by many other speakers, including Tiffany Ross, who shared about her important work in improving outcomes for families and individuals with mental illness uh, in the criminal justice settings. With nearly half of California counties represented in the audience, we were really proud of the event. And we hope you were able to join us. And if you weren't, the entire event is available on our website. In keeping with our important work around connecting statewide um, and connecting to local leaders in important dialogue, this year we launched our town hall series. As you can see from this slide, we were incredibly fortunate to have leaders from across industries and areas of expertise come and share their important work and insights with us. Throughout this year, we convened these important dialogues not only to hear from the experts, but also so that they can hear from our families about what matters and how they can use their important work to move California forward. If you want to learn more about any of these events, you can go to NAMI California's website uh, at namica.org forward slash town hall for more information. A few last key highlights to show in this space. At NAMI California office, uh, at the NAMI California office, we're always looking for new ways to bring people in, hear their experience, and connect them to decision makers. Maybe more than ever, that connection and convening has been of critical importance in the last year. Next slide. On the point of advocacy, this year was more critical than ever, and NAMI California was ready for the challenge. Throughout the pandemic, we have pushed lawmakers and government partners to be sure that we kept the needs of those living with severe mental illness and their family, families in the driver's seat of any decisions affecting them. Next slide. Each year, NAMI California determines their legislative priorities by surveying our thousands of members across the state. That information is then brought together for both ideas about what is important to members as well as what laws should be changed to improve the quality of life for the families that we are so lucky to serve. This year, our priorities were access to treatment, housing, crisis services, criminal justice, as well as services and supports for all ages. From there, our legislative team goes to work, sorting through hundreds of bills, to find important pieces of legislation to highlight and pursue each year. We look for important bills to support, as well as watch for potentially harmful things that we should oppose. We also hold advocacy days where we bring our members right to the legislators to make sure they understand our families' stories in their own words and the impact the legislation can have on us, as we did this last September, where we had an incredible speaker we had incredible speakers such as Alex Padilla, uh, amongst many others. Next slide. NAMI California is proud to sponsor, was proud to co-sponsor co um, three bills this session. First, SB 224, to establish age-appropriate mental health education for students, grades one through 12. AB 1065, NAMI California's voluntary tax contribution fund to support a mental health help program that aids in training law enforcement officers. AB 1331, that would establish new, a new position at the Department of Healthcare Services to focus on establishing and monitoring a comprehensive crisis care system. And AB 988, which would take the important work of establishing a national 988 number for suicide prevention and mental health crisis and bring it to California for implementation. It's named after Miles Hall, an individual who lived with mental illness and was killed during a law enforcement encounter. Next slide. To put it in other words, uh, advocacy is nonstop work. And as we work hard every day to fight stigma, provide support, educate the public and advocate for better mental health care for all, we have you, our members in mind. Every day, the movement grows stronger. Next slide. The affiliates in California continue to go above and beyond to serve their communities, and NAMI California has worked hard to continue to engage in new and innovative ways to support that incredible work. This year, we hosted our second annual Affiliate Leadership Pro 
uh, symposium. And the purpose of that symposium is to bring affiliate leaders together for one day to learn how to grow and sustain their organizations. Each year, affiliate leaders are surveyed as to what topics they would like training and resources in. Our Affiliate Leadership Council, made up of leaders from across the state, along with NAMI California staff, took that feedback and created a robust agenda of wonderful topics that fit the needs of affiliates, large and small. Topics covered included grassroots funding, raise, funding raising, fundraising for big and small organizations, navigating crisis calls with greater ease, and complying with contractor laws. It's an incredibly successful year with 99 affiliate leaders tending, attending, representing nearly 40 affiliates. We would like to give a special thanks um, to the members of the Affiliate Leadership Council, Paul Liu, Chair and NAMI California Board Member, Catherine Nicario, NAMI San Diego, Brenda Scott, NAMI Mount Sashinto, uh, Carol Williamson, NAMI Santa Cruz, David Bain, NAMI Sacramento, Gigi Crowder, NAMI Contra Costa, Jim Randall, NAMI San Fernando Valley, and Kathy Forward, NAMI Santa Clara. Next slide. So what's next for affiliates? Affiliate support continues in full force as we move to reopening, re-emerging from this pandemic and, and connecting with communities across the state, grapple with what that means for themselves and their communities. NAMI California is going to be hard at work finding new ways to support our affiliates and bring resources to where they're needed. NAMI California will release an updated affiliate resource guide this year, and this guide has been developed to help with local affiliate board staff transitions. We hope to share this project with our affiliate leaders really very soon. Further, we're working on new ways to bring affiliates into the Alliance with the creation of a Model B handbook to guide groups that would like to join the NAMI Alliance with best practices and solid next steps to do so. Next slide. Next, an annual conference update. Each year, NAMI California convenes staff, board members, behavioral health experts, and advocates to examine important trends, best practices, new treatments, activities in mental health, and ways we can work together to improve care and services for our families. As you know, the ongoing challenges of COVID-19, uh, with the ongoing challenges of the COVID-19 crisis, many aspects of our personal and professional lives are still being impacted. With continued public gathering mandates still in place, we're not able to meet in person. However, we are excited to share our conference for 2021 and its rapid approach. The conference is rescheduled for October 14th to 15th in 2021. Uh, and it will be our second virtual annual conference. Last year, we saw record-breaking registration of over 1,700 leaders from across the state, meaning we were able to engage many individuals from our communities that may not have been able to attend an in-person event. We don't wanna lose that opportunity. We hope to reach even more people through this year's virtual event. Next slide. In our great tradition, we're excited to bring an incredible set of workshops, speakers, and plenary sessions on the things that matter most and what's coming up in the state of California. Our first keynote speaker is the Secretary of the California Health and Human Services Agency, Mark Galley. Mr. Galley will be sharing his incredible perspective on not only what California has just been through, but what he sees in the future for mental health in our state. Our second keynote presentation for that presentation will be joined by the outstanding uh, Marla and David Thomas of the Marla and Dave Show. They're incredible family champions and mental health experts, and they will share their story with us as well as their important work. For more information, please visit the NAMI California website at NAMICALIFORNIA, NAMICA.org forward slash conference. Okay, as we get closer to the end of the presentation today, let's take a look at financials. I'm happy to report that our financial position remains strong, and as an organization, we've been fortunate enough to experience continued growth. As usual, 
we are holding our annual meeting prior to the actual end of the fiscal year. The data presented today will reflect, reflect the prior year's financials, in this case, fiscal year 2019 to 2020. Now, moving on to that financial information for the fiscal year just described. Our audit was completed in October of 2021. There were no reported management letter concerns, and on June 30th of 2020, we received a statement of financial position, indicating that our total assets were $2,522,905, liabilities, $268,757, and total net assets of $2,254,148. Next slide. Revenue. Administrative, which is overhead, was at 12.1%. We had $1,832,106 in expenses with $221,000, 24 uh, going to indirect costs for our overhead. That's roughly 12 cents per dollar. 88 cents of every dollar is going toward programs. As far as fiscal year uh, revenues goes, uh, grants and contracts represented 93.1% of our revenue, contributions 3.4%, membership 2.1%, investment income at 1.3%, and interest and in other sources of income at one-tenth of 1%. Next slide. As for expenses, program services represented 79.7% of uh, expenses, overhead uh, administrative costs at 12.1%, membership uh, costs were 4%, fundraising 2.5%, and costs for the conference at 1.7%. Now, we finished with the financials. We have an announcement today. That is the Board of, election, Board of Directors election results. This year's adjusted voting period was May 26th through June 24th. We want to uh, extend a big thanks to everyone who participated in the election by casting a vote or allowing your vote to be cast by proxy. Our 10% quorum requirement of 3,996 uh, um, active members was exceeded with 538 valid votes. It is a policy of NAMI California that recruitment of directors is a continuous shared responsibility between members, employee partners, and current board members. It is not our policy, but our practice to seek candidates, not only our policy, but our practice to seek candidates who will provide over and above all positive contributions and a combination of necessary skills, background, and qualifications. Also, in an effort to ensure a level playing field, we follow our no campaigning policy. This year, the nominating committee approved one incumbent and three new candidate applications. So without further ado, we're excited to announce, congratulations to NAMI Fresno's Chris Roop on her re-election to the NAMI California Board of Directors and election of incoming directors NAMI Tri-Valley's Laura Gregario, NAMI Sacramento's Dr. Robert McCarran, and NAMI Alameda County South's Dr. Stuart Butler. If you have not already done so, for a limited time, you can still view each candidate video on the NAMI California website voting page. Now, on behalf of the NAMI California members who have joined us virtually today, and everyone who participated by casting their vote, Congratulations, Chris, Robert, Stuart, and Laura. I look forward to the honor of serving beside you, whether it be virtually or in person, on the NAMI California Board of Directors in the months to come. I'm hoping for in person pretty soon. So in closing, this brings us to the end of our 2021 annual business meeting. As you just heard, we've had another incredible year together. And that's despite many ongoing challenges. Although we covered today's, uh, what we covered today is really only the tip of the iceberg in terms of the work that we do at the state office, we hope it gives you a glimpse into our efforts to change California for the better with your help. 
A special shout out to all our wonderful affiliates who make up Team NAMI. We could not do what we do without each of you and we look forward to working closely over the next year with you to continue providing the wholehearted support and services to families and individuals throughout our state who are impacted by mental health and mental illness. Again, we want to thank each of you for taking time out of your busy days to attend our annual business meeting. Please remember to submit any question or comment you may have uh, on the provided survey after this webinar ends. It's our way of understanding whether we've hit the mark in communicating what we need to during this meeting. And with that, I will call the NAMI California annual business meeting to a close. From all of us, be well, be safe, and thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you, Pat.